I like donuts as much as the next guy, but I'm going to take a break from this one and teach you about solenoids. Now that we've met them, I want to do them in a little bit more detail. I want to consider a solenoid here where, you know, remember we, we're drawing it as like a slice through a solenoid. Let's say that the current's all coming out right here. And the issue that we have is there's a magnetic field as a result that's, well, I guess it's going to be going this way. And the magnetic field, we're going to say, is really strong on the inside of the solenoid and pathetically weak on the outside of the solenoid because those field lines are so far apart out there. So we need an Amperian loop. The Amperian loop that I will choose is, let's say, this direction. Here's my Amperian loop, and the Amperian loop will go this way so that it's always in line with the field, and we've got this equation that says if I take a magnetic field and dot it into some length, I'm going to get simply the current that is enclosed times what, mu naught or something? <coughs> I think that sounds reasonable. Um, <coughs> this is my Amperian loop. Amperian loop. And I plan to divide this loop into four sections. So we're going to think about this because of, of the symmetry. Look at the symmetry of that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to call this section one, and this section two, and this section three. And this guy will be section four. And I know by this equation that the magnetic field times, um, times the length, well, let's define some lengths here. Let's say that this is length L. And this might be length h. Turns out that h is not going to affect us at all. We can make h arbitrarily large. As we look at loop 1, though, the magnetic field is this direction, and then it's that direction. So the magnetic field is never, well, I'm going to say b parallel times h. This is 1. And I find that the magnetic field is never parallel to h. So the dot product says, mm, no contribution. And then I'm supposed to add on the contribution from loop two. And that's when I can make this so arbitrarily large that the field becomes zero out there. So then I'm gonna say B parallel, and I guess this means outside of the solenoid, times L, plus uh, the contribution from the third section of my Amperian loop, which is B parallel times H. And again, I mean, maybe I should start emphasizing this. This is actually zero because there is no parallel component there. And similarly here, there is no parallel component. And then I have to add on that last part, which is the magnetic field inside that's parallel. And that's gonna be multiplied by the distance L. All that has to be the enclosed current <coughs> times mu naught. Now, the enclosed current will be the current in the solenoid times the number of loops that I have enclosed. In this case, that n would be 4. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this is i in the solenoid times n times mu naught. <clears throat> so let us then find, what are we supposed to do here? We're supposed to find, uh, oh, let's investigate this guy. The magnetic field outside is so small because I'm going to make H so large that I can in fact call it zero, especially in comparison to the field inside, which is freaking enormous. So if I'm looking to find the magnetic field that's parallel to the length, of course all of it is in here, I'm simply going to find the magnetic field inside the solenoid times the length of the solenoid is, well, the length of my loop anyway, doesn't matter if I go all the way to the end in an ideal solenoid. Of course, real solenoids are going to have all sorts of complicated things going on, but I'm not interested in details today. After all, you're interrupting my donut, remember? B inside, we'll solve it for B inside, and we find that it is simply the current times the number of loops divided by the length, now that's something pretty beautiful, times mu naught. That is the magnetic field inside of a solenoid, and uh, well, we can sometimes make the, uh, make the statement magnetic field of a solenoid is, I'm going to define the number of turns per unit length 
to be lowercase n, which is sort of like a turn density or something. Sorry, that looks like an eta. It is just a lowercase n. And it's just going to be lowercase n times the current times mu naught. Awesome, that's the field inside a solenoid. Yeah, Ampere's law is just as useful as Gauss's law. Yay.